Josh called us putas. Hey, putas, are you ready? No. That's Spanish for... Party? Friends. Party, yeah. We're, we're in the puta right now. <laughs> this is a sausage puta. <laughs> this is a sausage puta. <laughs> <laughs> What's <And> up, everyone? <laughs> <laughs> On that note... Oh, That's hey. a horrible way to start a podcast, but here we are. Yeah, we'll see if we keep that. <laughs> we're going to probably, keep, probably, probably it. keep it. Probably keep it. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't you? I don't know. Hello. What's up? Long time no see. Welcome back. Maybe All two right. weeks. Where's my, where's my screen and my dice? I don't, I don't know it's how this works. Right? It's uncomfortable? Well, yeah. It's different, right? I feel like you know I'm not in control, and that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, we're in control now. Oh, no. <laughs> That's why I moved you from that side to that side? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not about it. It's also so that the angle would fit. <laughs> <laughs> it's mostly because the angle so the angle would fit, but... You That's know, fair. Whatever. That's fair. Oh, So we just wanted to do another podcast, try to keep our schedule going. Yeah. Uh, we have our buddy Justin here. He is here. I uh, am. He's not DMing today, but he's going to talk to us about his life. Um, about my life. About okay. your life. We're probably going to get into like diet stuff. Because, oh, okay. Uh, you have been doing keto for I want to say four months now since March. Yeah, since March. And then Pat, you and I both do that. It's been about a year for us. Oh close shit. To, yeah. Yeah. So you're both of you are a little more um, regimented with it than I am. Brown. What? No. <laughs> uh, I'm a little. I'm a little bit brown. Yeah, you're a little more brown than I am. You're a little bit mulatto. <laughs> <laughs> but I figure that's where we'll probably start off. So tell okay. us about your journey. About my journey. Yeah. Um, it was, if you watched, if I remember correctly, I think I'm episode 10 of the Drunk Chore Show. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. 10 sounds of right. The Drunk Chore Show. Um, it's Justin, Dungeon Master. Yeah. It's yeah, that. Not a kinky right. way. Not a kinky way. <laughs> not a kinky way. Not a kinky boy. Um, I think that was that day I started because you're like, Oh, Hey, yeah, we're doing this diet. I'm like, well, what's the diet? And you're like, yeah, it's keto. It's uh just a bunch of fat and protein and like no carbs. And I'm all like, does meat, it bro. work? It's like all the fun food, all the fun foods just gone. I'm like, I'm half Italian. I don't know if I can do this. Um, but I, I don't know. For some reason, I just, I asked you a lot of questions. Both of you, I, I blew up your phone for at least a good two weeks. Like, can I eat this? What do I do about this? How do I crave this like hunger? Cause, um, when I started, I was at about 210 pounds. So when you see like any of the old D and D stuff, I'm a lot heavier, um, in the face and in the arms and not in like the cool way. <laughs> Not in the muscular way, but in the fat guy way. Why are you staring at me when you say that? I'm only saying that because you have bigger arms than me. <laughs> you're like, you know, yeah. you have bigger <laughs> arms. You, you know have what the- it's like to be a fat slob. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yours is in the good way, and mine was in like the Oprah arms way, where I kind of just could do oh, this. Oh, the, the chicken wings? Or yeah, at Oprah wings. arms. Is that what it, what is it called? It's called fat. <laughs> it's called fat. <laughs> um, so I just, no I really. No fat shaming here. But, you know, but it like was disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, it's fine as long as you're saying it about yourself. Yeah. I'll stop, I, I'll stop interrupting you now. No, no, you're I'll good. I'll stop interrupting you, though. You're just, just, no, but yeah, I'm no, we, we will, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that's why I think I want to start so what killing I- myself. <laughs> um, I just, I, I really, it's hard for me to get motivated for things because I'm lazy. And I will openly admit that about myself. But it just, it seemed like it was something easy I could do. And I had a support system despite being, you know, a really far away support system but it still worked and mm. yeah it just i it, it your body makes a habit out of something after what 30 days something like that so 20 it's the 2190 rule 2190 right yeah 21 uh days for a habit to form and 90 days for a lifestyle to form okay i don't know how much science is behind it but i know that's I've, I've that's heard that before. that was on like dr oz right and he's a scientist yeah he was a doctor he's a doctor he's got a doctor in the title of his show mm-hmm. so him, um, Doctor Octopus. What? <laughs> um, what was? What do you think was the hardest part for you transitioning into a keto diet? Um, I think it was the. I got really bad keto flu my first week, which was uh, like I was okay until about Friday, where I was super lightheaded. I was lethargic. Um, I thought I was gonna pass out the whole day, and uh, I didn't realize it was just my body going through withdrawal from sugar in and carbohydrates i thought like my my diet wasn't like amazing yeah but it wasn't i didn't think it was so like sugar heavy like i always tried to be slightly conscious of what i put in my body it was just a lot of fast food mm-hmm. which is just fucking pounds of sugar. Just sugar yeah 
Um, but it doesn't taste like sugar. I know. So I didn't think it was that sweet. Um, but yeah, my body just, it wanted to kill me and I was ready to die. <laughs> it was like, what are you doing, <laughs> It's like, bro? what is this? Just eat a burger. And I'm like, I can't. I'm doing it. Dude, once you start paying attention to it, you see that there's yeah. sugar in fucking everything. There is. There's even, so much fucking sugar. Even the bratwurst that I have, mm-hmm. which is like the way that it splits is almost the perfect keto food. It's like 70, 25, 5. Yeah. And um, it has sugar in it. Those five is just like sugar that they decided to put in there. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't, I don't want that, but it's $9. It's $9 for so many. For, for 14 so many of brats. That. That's so great. It's, it's like a day and a half of food. <laughs> Of just eating bratwurst. Yeah, like just eating straight. straight, just straight. Yeah. I've, I've seen you eat just straight, straight bratwurst. Yeah. Just straight brats. That's what I had today. Bratwurst it's, and eggs. Yeah, bratwurst. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I, oh, shit. I did have Shaped two like bratwurst and there's two of you. <laughs> oh, no. And four <laughs> eggs. <laughs> I did have four eggs. You did, didn't oh, you? Oh, man. I uh, guess I'm trying to send a signal to you guys. <laughs> I we mean, did not pick up on it. <laughs> total beta. <laughs> um. So... In doing that, in, in, mm-hmm. in going through the keto flu and stuff, can you kind of break th- break down like what what do you do at work? How do you eat? What do you do? You meal prep? Do you like, um, what's, what goes into a typical day for you? Because I know what we do. I mean, we meal yeah, prep. You guys meal prep the fuck out of things, and yeah. I'm like, oh, I don't do that. <laughs> um, I just once again, it just goes into the lazy thing where uh, I don't really meal prep. So like a usual work day will be either black coffee or I'll do bulletproof coffee. Uh, And then I'll try to fast until lunch, which is can range anywhere from 11 a.m. to about 1 p.m. So I'm not really stretching it that far. Um, What I'll do is I've become even a bigger fan of like tuna fish. I like tuna fish in general. But what I'll do is I'll make like a fat kind of bomb tuna fish where it's uh, mayo and then I'll do avocado. And sometimes I'll even put like a hard boiled egg and crumble like um, what you call it, uh, bacon bits on top. Mm -hmm. And it just, it fills me up really, really well without all the sugar in it. So usually I'll do like tuna fish. I'll go to Jimmy John's a lot. I do their on winches all the time because I think the BLT one is one gram of carbs. Oh, that's Uh, it? Yeah. And then the tuna one, if you do a skinny one, I think it's three grams of carbs. So usually I'm clocking around like I've just been, all I do is really count carbs. I don't count anything else because I know I'm going to get fat from something. I just, Mm. I really try to focus on being under 20 grams. 20 is rough too. Yeah. Like if you can hit that, more power to you. I usually, I usually hit under 20 or I'll hit just at 20 because that's, that's all I'm carb counting. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I think that's what's really been helping me lose weight. Honestly, what did you, what did you, where did you stagnate? Like in what week did you, cause I know, uh, I've dropped 20 pounds mm-hmm. and I've, I've pretty much kept it off. I've fluctuated at like between one and five pounds mm-hmm. in the time that I've done keto. But I think some of that's been muscle mass. And then like recently I haven't been able to go to the gym and stuff. Right. But in what uh, it took about four weeks for me to stagnate and really not see any more loss. Okay. Where did that happen for you? I had a plateau around one ninety five. Uh, where my body just didn't want to lose weight at all. And I just kept kind of just sticking to it. And I, I lessened my caloric intake because also, you know, that's the simple way of losing weight. You just burn off more calories than you consume. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I started calorie counting and numbered crunched. And then eventually that got me over the plateau. And then I just continued to do the, the carb. I usually lose maybe about maybe two pounds a week. Like nothing super crazy. Yeah, well, that's like a uh, and it usually decline. and it usually fluctuates. Like I'm right now, uh, lowest I've been so far is I've been 178, and uh, I usually fluctuate between 178 and 180 right now. So I'm probably like after all the hash browns that we ate yesterday, <laughs> oh, I'm probably at 181, 182. But <clears throat> I just once again I, I weigh myself every day, um, and I just I make sure I just carb count. What what co- or how many calories do you hit? What's your target? My target, uh, I try to hit fifteen because it's that's pretty low. It is. I guess you're you're still trying to lose weight. I'm still trying to lose weight. I'm trying to get to about one seventy five and then see how I feel. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I'm almost there already because one seventy eight is not that far off. Yeah, and you and like from day to day you fluctuate five pounds. Yeah, that's just humans in general. So I just I want to. 
I want to get to 175 or like see how I feel about right now where I'm at and then see if maybe I want to go to 170 and then yeah. see where I'm at at 170 because I've wanted to be 175 since like 2012 <laughs> and you, the lowest I've ever gotten has been like 185 and that's been my like oh perpetual plateau yeah. even when I was working out every day. When what At what point in this cycle of, of doing keto in the last four months have you been like – cool like i'm i'm happy with what like for like that mirror test mm-hmm. where you look in the mirror and you're like it's not what i necessarily want but like i'm mm-hmm. i'm so much happier now with this than i was honestly it's been recently uh like i would say maybe in the last like week or two because i finally hit that 178 and i'll occasionally like you know look at myself in the mirror i'm like hey all right, cool. Your you belts, look- your guts, not hanging over your belt anymore. You can, see your, <laughs> you can see your day, your dong, and not you know have to suck in your gut as much. But uh, it's it's definitely been recently because I clothes are starting to fit better. Like all my old jeans that were super tight on me are super loose, and I needed new stuff. And what is it? Uh, I, I live with three very lovely gay people, and so I've I've been asking them for like fashion advice because I don't know how to dress for my body anymore. Like usually yeah. it's been, you know, baggy t-shirts and uh, baggy jeans, so that way it doesn't, you know, I'm not accentuating my sausage body. <laughs> but now that it's slightly better, uh, it's a slim gym, if you will. Yeah. Uh, I've been asking, you know, I've been wearing more what you know you guys kind of wear which is like more the collared shorter shirts and is that a new shirt this is this is a new shirt i like it new shirt and then new jeans i'm rocking because you know i can't really that's okay under the table but (laughs) they look nice thank you uh it's just i don't know if i want to buy any new more new clothes only because i don't know how much more weight i'm gonna lose yeah but yeah recently it's been it's been really nice i even shaved down the beard because Beard is, uh, I have a whole bunch of weird defense mechanisms Mm -hmm. to make myself feel better and stop, you know, accentuating how fat I was. Mm -hmm. So it was thick beard, uh, lots of hoodies, um, (laughs) sweaters. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. (laughs) Uh, and for anyone just listening, Pat's wearing a hoodie right now. Wait, where'd Pat go? Oh no. (laughs) Oh God. We can talk shit about him now. (laughs) Fucking hate that. Fucking hate that guy. Um, his arms are so big. <laughs> his arms are so jacked. Uh, and then I used to, I have this leather jacket that I wear a lot. I still oh, wear yeah. it, but, uh, I recently went out with my roommates and we were at a club, uh, and a girl asked me cause it was, you know, it's the middle of summer and it's fucking, uh, in Florida, Florida. So it was like 102 degrees outside at night. And this girl's like, why are you wearing a leather jacket, sweetie? And I went, I just, you know, I like it. And then, because she's drunk, she kept pressing me. So she said, why are you wearing it? And I went, you know how, like, girls wear a really sexy red dress or a really, like, sexy black dress to feel powerful? I'm like, this is my sexy black dress? And she's like, oh, I got it. Yeah. yeah. No, she would, you know? that was definitely the way to say it the first time. And she would have been like, oh. This is my sexy dress. <laughs> is it your sexy dress? Do you just wear it sometimes with no pants? No, I just wear, that's when I wear my sexy dress. Got it. It has sequins on it. It's very <laughs> nice. It's super pretty. It's super pretty. Do you like. think it's affected your confidence at all? I think so. It's made me, it's made me a little bit more confident. Uh, there is a, I'm naturally, I'm very withdrawn and uh, very unconfident. Uh, but there is a running joke where it's, I have two personas, which is normal Justin and then strip club Justin, <laughs> which if, you know, through context clues, you can kind of figure out when strip club Justin comes out. When? Bar mitzvahs. <laughs> 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 I dance with so many nanas. <laughs> um, they love it. They love it. They love my little putting them. <laughs> um, but I just, I've been finding, yeah, I get a little bit more confident. Like I think we went out the other weekend. Like two weeks ago? About two weeks ago, and, you know, uh, I was dressed like I normally dressed, but for some reason I had that weird, Justin has a fistful of ones, and this girl wants to talk to me because I have that. Alcohol. Or alcohol. I had this weird, alcohol. I had this weird, I had this weird confidence where I was able to just to talk to a very attractive person and, like, not get nervous, which I usually do, or, you know, I... Usually my, my first giveaway when I see someone attractive, I go, oh, no, you're cute. 
<laughs> I'll say that out loud because there that's, are things that are mentally wrong with that's me. That's a tell. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> that's a tell. I go, oh, no, you're cute. And then I just shut down. And it, I'm just like. Yeah, you were chatting really well. with. There was a whole circle that you were talking with. Yeah. Now, was Luke with you still? Luke is the British, the one? handsome, British the really man. handsome. Yeah. That's yeah. the name, Luke. Yeah. The ten. I, I meant to throw the that ten. In there. Whoa, whoa, whoa! He's a nine and a half. He likes Creed. He's foreign. It's not his fault. Uh, doesn't he matter. Has an accent. That knocks him down. It knocks him down. <laughs> My favorite is always wide open. Creed. And you're like, oh, I can't. Oh. <laughs> I told you I went to see uh, Scott Stapp with him. No, oh, you God. didn't. So one day he he hit me up like, hey, do you do you want to go see Scott Stapp with me? I'm like, who's that? Oh, from Creed. Uh, okay. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> but it, it was free, so we went up to, uh, it was, I think it was up near, not, maybe Daytona. I don't okay. Know. It was free, but it was Scott Stapp. I knew one song, and everything else I just kind of looked around and, and saw all the bikers who were watching it. It was at a Harley Davidson. It's at a Harley Davidson joint. It's where you think it would be. Yeah. But that, not. or I think like a youth ministry. <laughs> With arms wide open. You know, T.I. You- saved his life like two times because he tried to commit what? suicide. Really? What? Yeah. Like, he he was super depressed. Like, look it up. Like, yeah. he was really upset. And then, then I think T.I. T.I. saved his life? T.I. Tips, whatever his last name. Tip, whatever. Igloo. Igloo. Super weird. Ant-Man's T.I. <laughs> yeah. Saved the lead singer of Creed. From committing suicide. That's really unfortunate. Wow. <laughs> and you were I, bo- I think I hate T.I. now. <laughs> Fuck that guy. Was that the one who did Peace, Love, and Gap in high school? Do you remember that? Mm. Or was that... Co- that was common. That was common, That was common. I think. Never mind. You're, you're... God, you're pretty. Thanks. Uh, well, I just... You remember Kaylee? She was super into yes. those types of rappers. Was she really? Yeah. T. White, I mean. waspy Kaylee? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love Common. Okay. Common. Well, what? Co- that's why I kept getting Common and T.I. mixed up. Because one of them was the Peace Loving Gap one. And the other one saved the Saved Creed. Saved the saved saved. Creed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, uh, what other benefits have you seen uh, in in starting this diet? In the diet? Yeah. Um, I have... Um, I don't know what that was. Sorry. Um, how easy it is is a big hook. I've gotten uh, my friends... A lot of friends have converted over to doing keto because they see what I'm eating. They see what I'm doing. I tell them that it's not hard to follow. Just be, you know, if you have some sort of discipline to it, it'll work for you. You put in as much as, you know, you'll get out as much as you put in. So, um, I have a lot more energy. I'm sleeping a lot better. Uh, you, I'm a really bad insomniac. So falling asleep at like 1am is a big deal for me. Uh, that being the early time, right? That being an early time, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I've I've also been going to sleep a lot earlier than that. But yeah, sleeping better, a uh, lot more energy. Um, how else would I be able to do five D and D campaigns without yeah, so many doing campaigns. it? We appreciate uh, it though. Yeah. Have um, you gotten any blood work done? Uh, not recently. I, I'm interested to see how my cholesterol. Is. Well, yeah, because I got mine done for I had to do a biometric screening for mm-hmm. my health insurance, and I like everything was like perfect. Really? Yeah, like everything was, you know, in the whatever 90th percentile mm-hmm. of my age group. Um, and I think at the time I was I was doing carnivore. Okay. Which I pulled back from that because I like regular bowel movements. <laughs> So you know, like pooping every two weeks? No, that was weird. It was scary, <laughs> dude. I, I thought I was like gonna just rupture a bowel. You were having a Sam moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't want to paralyze my intestines. Yeah, either. yeah. But I'm interested because I don't think you haven't gone to a doctor in God, ten no. years. Yeah, it's been a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not good. Don't have insurance, so you know that's kind of. I just kind of kind of well, hope that everything's okay. Allegedly. Well, let's, let's not com- admit to anything that could get you. Oh no, I put that on my. I put that on my my last tax return. Oh, then yeah, no, I was fine. good. I was good. Okay, yeah, I'm just looking out for you. I appreciate that. That's, that's you're very very kind. I try, you know. Also, I've been finding I've been doing uh, detoxes occasionally. There's this uh, at Target. They have uh, it's called Green Power. Oh yeah, and I found mm-hmm. that I wasn't one. I wasn't getting enough vegetables because. Vegetables have carbs. Gross. Yeah. Ew. So Gross. I've been doing I've been doing uh, vegetable tablets uh, just so I can get those servings in. 
is and it, then is it dehydrated vegetables in like a, a it's capsule? like an effervescent tablet it looks like um kind of like the airborne tablets you just plop it in it's just super gross looking but it doesn't taste too bad and then they make a uh, a detox kind of powder which i'll take um just because i know that i eat garbage sometimes still like pork rinds oh like yeah i mean you have to you uh, how many how often <clears throat> do you have cheat days um until recently i my longest streak was about three weeks without a cheat day because you know and then one day i was just like you know what i really want i want a whopper a fries and a dr pepper and i felt like trash <laughs> immediately like yeah. halfway through the burger i'm like no <laughs> But I, I paid, paid for, for it, it. <laughs> so I had to eat the whole thing, and I drank all the soda and ate all the fries and the ketchup, and I just I stayed up until about three a.m. because it just sat right here, and I just couldn't mm-hmm. fall asleep, and I was miserable. Um, and then, other than that, I think last night was my other cheat last day. Last night was a good night. It was a great night. Last night was a good night. I find doing it every one to two weeks depending on on what your goals are yeah it's great because well, you get it out of your system and then you also get reminded how shitty you how, feel. how bad you feel God. yeah just feel like garbage usually like my my guilty pleasure has been halo top oh yeah i haven't been i don't crush the whole carton i do the uh, i do a fourth because that's a serving mm-hmm. and usually by the time like i'm through the fourth i'm like ah, i don't need the rest of this i'm good I feel like, and maybe it's just for me, I know you and I have talked about it, but I don't know about you. My cravings for things Mm -hmm. have gotten stronger that aren't keto-centric. Like, when I'm like, I'm not a big ice cream guy, but when I wanted ice cream, I'm like, I'm going to fucking, I will go through a brick wall. Yeah. (laughs) Like, and I don't know if that's something that you've experienced. I know, like I said, we've talked about it, and I, we both feel that way. Like, when you get a craving for something, like, especially something sweet, it's like, okay, I, I need that now. Yeah, it's yeah. hard to curb that. I would say my, my cravings, it's less that the cravings are stronger, it's that the food tastes better mm. when you do have it. Like that cheesecake that's sitting in my fridge right <laughs> now. Yeah. Taunting me? Taunting me. I mean, it's like, it's a hippie keto cheesecake that me and Noel made, yeah. but it's still cheesecake. It's still, yeah, it's still a little... It's just like a big boom, some, fat bomb. Ooh, I love those. Um, yeah, I totally run into that all the time, so... I have a lot of, I had my coworker who I got onto keto. She's like, how do you curb those kind of things? I always try to find a way to scratch an itch. If I can mm-hmm. find a work around it, I'm going to do it. So my big thing has been pizza. I miss pizza. Oh God, I love, I love pizza. pizza. Ooey gooey, saucy, <laughs> delicious. So a big help has been uh, actually from Mike, those pizza, that pizza jerky. Mm-hmm. Oh, definitely yeah. scratches that itch. And it's two grams of carbs per pouch or four grams. So I usually, um, d and I'll snack a lot. So usually I'll try to get one of those because it craves that, that pizza need. If I want something sweet, I did for a while. Uh, I have a Whole Foods by my house. So I would get really, really dark chocolate. And then I'd get fat-free whipped cream, like Ready Whip. And I would crunch up at least four of those little chocolate squares because they're about a gram each. Mm-hmm. Crush it with a rolling pin and then fill a Dixie cup with Ready Whip and then just top it with the what you call it the yeah. chocolate and then just spoon it so i would get the savory sweet and salty from the chocolate were you here when pat made those um those garlic parmesan mm. yes I bacon was. nuts oh yes those I was. are real good because they're I, I think they're zero carbs they are zero well carbs. unless maybe the cheese has the some cheese carbs. might have like a carb yeah but what? you put so yeah. little on it but that that's been something i started doing yeah i made them for a potluck mm. they're uh it's just a good snack to have sitting around I, I f- saw something I really want to try, which is uh, Parmesan chips, like pizza chips, which is like four pieces of pepperoni. You put them in the oven, and then you top it with Parmesan cheese, Ooh, and then yeah. you put it back in the oven, and it crisps up, and then you just dip it in marinara. I'm about that life. Yeah. I yeah. love... I'm, I'm, that's, the, that's my cheat. Like, when I have a cheat day, most times I'm getting pizza, Yeah, because I miss it so much. Mm-hmm. I love pizza. Mm-hmm. But keto's done... It's done a lot for me. I know when you and I started it, I was in a pretty negative space and I feel like part of my changing my diet very much like you did. I Mm -hmm. feel like it, uh, it helped my mood. It helped me be able to get out of things and rebound out of things a little quicker. And I really can't speak enough for it. You know, uh, I'm definitely, I'm, I'm interested. I'm going to go do, uh, go to target and check out those green, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I I know I need more vegetables in my, in my diet, even though I do the broccoli and I do the spinach occasionally and I'll do different Mm -hmm. things. It doesn't hurt to have a little bit more. Exactly. And they're two, 
they're two carbs yeah per tablet so if you do it like one a day do it in the morning or you know whenever you i take like a multivitamin i'll do that yeah i do a multivitamin and fish oil yeah and and now i'll do that as well i'll just fill my pill caddy up yeah (laughs) just like my grandma yeah because i forget (laughs) things (laughs) it's helpful it really is yeah and I'm, i'm glad that you've had good results with it because it was something that like you were like, I don't know, I really like pasta. And <laughs> I do. Like, I and now pasta. you've you've rebounded into this, and you're like, your cheat yesterday wasn't even bad. It was like a like this I, big aside of home fries, and that and was I had it. Toast too. I was oh, like, did you eat the? I, like, I, fuck yeah, I don't toast. eat. <laughs> I didn't eat the toast. So yeah, I did eat a waffle. Though. You ate that waffle was. It smelled really good. <laughs> it was really but good. I scratch itches. They was yeah. a Halo Top makes a pancake and waffles ice cream, and it tastes just like an Eggo waffle. That's yeah. awesome, and it's great. I think if you uh, another good thing to do is if you're gonna get something like pasta or bread, try mm-hmm. to find gluten free. Because I've noticed that if it's not gluten, it doesn't hit as hard. Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> like for pizza, if I'm just doing my cheat thing, I get an Udi's pizza. It's like ten dollars, and it's like a personal size pizza. Okay. But it's enough for a, a whole meal. I think I think it ends up being it's like 150 carbs. So it's way over what you yeah, want to do. Right. But uh, what I don't do you, feel shitty after it. What do you normally do as far as your carb count, like your limit goes, uh, if you have one? I I do. I'm kind of like <clears throat> I'm flexible. You change on it. diets so much that's concerning <laughs> to me. <laughs> yeah. I my consistent thing is is low sugar and I stay away from gluten. Yeah. But it's um. I try to stay under 50 for sure. Target is 20. Because I also drink that kombucha almost yeah, every day. And that's so 16 on its own. Yeah. Um, and then a lot of bratwurst, which each one I think has two. Mm-hmm. And then avocado has like three. Yeah, they have about like two like or that. three. So I, I end up staying under under 30 most of the time. But I also need 2,400 a day. Yeah. Like I need more calories than normal. Because you're trying to gain No, just to maintain. Or, okay. I burn hot. I burn hot. I do. No, I do. <laughs> I ate. Uh, I ate three bratwurst and an avocado, which mm-hmm. is like twelve hundred calories, I think. And I was hungry in four or five hours. Yeah. So, like, I have to eat more just okay. to not die. Not die. <laughs> you. That's always. You know. That's always been my issue. It, it is, has. Is gaining weight's been hard yeah. for me. Gaining weight's hard for you. Which yeah. I don't have that problem. <laughs> what about you? Do you have a limit that you try to go by? Um, I try to stay under fifty. Uh, just because I I, I don't. I have I've been really bad about counting mm-hmm. uh, carbs and stuff. I, I was good for a couple days, and then I kind of fell off. Work got hectic, and then my accident happened, and now right. like everything's turned to shit. But um, yeah, I just I try to stay under fifty for sure, and I can be a little more lax with it because I am uh, I am able to put on mass a little easier than most people. Mm-hmm. So um, I I run up to fifty. I'll go over occasionally, but I don't feel bad as soon as I go over like. As soon as I, I'll say, as soon as I go over like 80, my body starts to, to slow down and I'm like, oh no, Pat made a mistake. <laughs> oh no. Like, so Mondays I work at Mel Mushroom in Sanford <laughs> mm-hmm. for trivia and they do $5 personal pizzas. Oh God, I miss oh, Mel Mushroom. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, anytime I'm like starving, like I'll have woken up late or I got busy with the animal or something, mm-hmm. um, I'll be like, oh, shit, I need to eat something. And I'll be on my way. And I'm like, no, I'm going to get a pizza because it's $5. <laughs> and sometimes I'll eat the whole thing. And it just slow. It bogs me down so bad for the rest of the night. Yeah. So what I've been trying to do now is I'll do I do the zero calorie monster. And I go to 7-Eleven where they have um, those packs. Mm-hmm. And it's like the last one that I got was sunflower seeds, beef jerky, and uh sriracha peanuts Ooh. and it was it was like two bucks or something maybe less than that and it was like this little pouch thing and i ripped it open and i just started <clears throat> munching and i was like okay this is smarter and then when i go to graffiti i'll get like wings or something which yeah. is cool but um yeah like mm-hmm. anytime i do pizza or anything out i'm like oh no the crash is gonna happen <laughs> yeah, it's gonna yeah. happen hard well that's like when we went to after a D we went to rosati's and yeah. we all we got breaded wings and pizza and we were all like we came back here and we all died we all literally laid down and we really were like bad. Nope, yeah nope nothing that was rough it was a, that was a bad time and that yeah. was like i think that was one of your first cheats yeah because you were on it for like cheat. two weeks mm-hmm. or something mm-hmm. and you were like yeah it feels good and then we were like cool cheat day and then you were like Bruh. i was like we're gonna do what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember coming back and us all go being like we need to go take a nap yeah. <laughs> yeah it was bad it was really bad yeah that was rough 
But yeah, I try to stay under fifty. But yeah. again, I I I have the luxury of I guess the opposite of you is that I don't have to I don't have to like up my calorie intake very much if I want to put mass on. I've always had the ability to just put mass on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And for whatever reason, you know, my calorie count, I try to, I try to stay at 2000 calories consistently and I try to overreach on my fats Mm -hmm. and my carbs. I just, as long as it's underneath my fat by a decent margin, I'm happy. Yeah. I think you get a bit of benefit too, of having a more active job than both of us. Yeah. I do walk around. Cause you and I just sit all day constantly. Plus you work out too. You guys work. I haven't recently, but yeah, I do. You know, he does. He works out. Yeah. I was saying you both also work Mm. out. I do. I just do strictly diet. Oh, you haven't started working out yet? No. I haven't started working so out at all. You should join. And by uh, join, I mean just do push-ups. Do like 10 push-ups a day. One of us. I have uh, I have a friend who um basically she used to be a one of the like power lifter chicks on Instagram. Oh, yeah. And so uh, recently on Instagram I put the before and after picture of, you know, January to like the other week Mm -hmm. and she commented on it and she's like, Oh, you're doing great. That's so awesome. And I'm like, you need to teach me how to lift things. (laughs) Cause I feel like you can also teach me how to lift things. I can teach you you kind of far away. Well, hopefully not for much longer. Still got a year. (laughs) (laughs) Just resigned our lease. Damn it. Uh, Yeah. I I mean, I want to start, Dude, start, just do like 10 push ups a day. Yeah. We want to we, do 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 one push up a day. No, I'm not kidding. And then just do a girl push up. No, no do, whatever. Kidding. No, but seriously, because yeah. if, if uh, you know a week from now you do five push ups a day, that's 35. If you that's do true. zero every day, that's zero. That's still zero. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it, him and I want to get, uh, at least I still do. I want to get a gym membership. Oh, I do too. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, it's just finding, it's getting my schedule right so that yeah. we can get one and and it be- both benefit. Uh, but if that and when that time comes, I'll take you to the gym and I'll teach you some yeah. stuff. I'll show you what's up. I have a gym membership that I haven't used. Where to? Uh, LA Fitness. Oh, you, wait, you still have that? It's the, they still take $20 out a month. Sweet. And I haven't gone in yeah. like. I mean, for a while it was a, just fat tax. Like a year and a half. Yeah, it's just fat. That's, that's <clears throat> when I used to have a gym membership like that and I, I wasn't working out and I was putting like bad weight on. Yeah. I was like, this is fat tax. This is you fat tax. You deserve this. <laughs> that's fair. I need to, I do need to switch it because it's still, I don't like having specific gyms because you're like, I signed up originally when I lived in Largo mm-hmm. and so that gym is in Largo and there's one right across the street from my house. I think you can still use it. Is it LA? It's, it's weird. Yeah, they're weird about it. You did the yeah the the twenty dollar one is only for a specific for sure. gym. Oh. The forty one is you can go anywhere. God. So I gotta either my rent's going down. So you could freeze it too. Yeah, I need like to. 10? I just need to switch it. Honestly, I just need to go. Oh, you can do that. I hope so. <laughs> yeah, let's hope. It's probably just a cancel and like renew over yeah. over yonder. Because I'd like to start going again and um, you know start getting rid of the muffin top like i Mm -hmm. despite losing weight it's still there and so i'd like a less of a grimace shape to my body and more taste bud the taste look less like a chicken nugget and more like a dorito (laughs) (laughs) pointy end on top though wait you want the pointy on top yes i want to look like a freak (laughs) (laughs) i want people how would that look i want people to look at me and go there he goes homeboy looks like a dorito (laughs) Just like he always dreamed. <laughs> you'll be the opposite of most guys at LA Fitness because they all look top heavy. So you'll just do straight leg day. Yeah, there's nothing but legs. Just straight leg legs. day. You'll be a pair. To be fair, I also look like that, but I do work my legs out. I just have very skinny legs. It's not my fault. I have chicken legs too, man. Yeah, it's not great. You have chicken. You don't have chicken legs. I'm like you have pretty. Chicken. I'm pretty slim everywhere. Yeah. yeah. But I also because I, I run now too. Yeah. So that builds up the muscles now. a bit. Yeah, I don't like running. I know. That's why I can run faster and farther than you. Well, let's not get carried away. Farther for sure. And probably So if you faster. go to Junk Drawer's Instagram, you'll see a <laughs> foot race between these two. It'll happen one day. It's Yeah, it has to. It has. Yeah, now it has to. As soon as I can you move my back precedent. in not a negative way. Yeah. Yeah. Trying to do that now, I would something would pop and break, and I would die. Yeah, you, you got to file that claim and everything tomorrow. I'm going to. I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to call them. Apparently, from what I heard from Craig Brooks, friend of the show, uh, oh. they bill, the doctor he told me, bills insurance directly. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to make that appointment and be like, it's your guy's problem. Yeah, you that, that's the other thing I was going to say is, is uh, you can just tell them. Yeah. Whichever one. I'm uh, going to do that. 
Did you pick one yet? I'm going to go to cough. Uh, Craig pronounces it co. So but it's spelled cough. It's spelled cough. It is Dr. Cough. Dr. Cough. I and thought it was a uh, joke. Yeah, it's not. Oh. Apparently he's very good. It's, I bet he gives great physicals. I mean, we'll find out. <clears throat> it's been a really long time since I got a physical, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> can chiropractors give physicals? I don't think so. I mean, they can. Should they? <laughs> no. No, they should not. But they will. He's going to be like, hey, cough for me. Why are your hands on my back and my testicles? Is I don't that understand. essential oils, though? Do you three hands? <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> uh, so one of the things I want to I want to jump to really quick, and uh, maybe it's not really quick. Maybe we'll continue to talk about it sure. for the next hour and a half. I don't know. Cool. Um, we, we spoke about confidence. And one of the yeah. things that I think we always talk about with you on the show, and one of the things that I like talking about with you on the show is D&D. <laughs> and Josh and I, since playing, have noticed a lot, like maybe not a lot of changes, but definitely changes in, in us personally okay and i was kind of curious as to your you've had experiences with that as well yeah we've had experiences with it and uh just your thoughts on that and and you know what changes you've had with that and and maybe mm-hmm. even levels up in in confidence within in the well i have game. a lot of experience <laughs> to uh, level up and i'm gonna die alone uh, um <laughs> it's it definitely helped me go through like I, I mentioned it in the in the DM episode. Uh, I went through like a divorce, and also I went through about a couple of maybe a few months before the divorce, which was February. We split so September. We also there was a miscarriage with me and my former ex wife, and uh, so I had a lot of I internalized a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Uh, because that's kind of like just what I was taught as a kid. Not that, you know, my mom's like, don't, don't cry or anything like that. But it was just, I found that I didn't get bothered as much if I didn't express myself. So that just kind of was a bad habit that I developed over the years where it's like, you know, it's no one else's problem, but my own, I don't really want to bother anyone with this. Let me just internalize it. So I just internalized a lot. And so by the time I started playing D and D, it was I was living alone under a bridge, like basically <laughs> I was living under a bridge in St. Pete. That's so cool. Like a, <laughs> it was not cool. <laughs> uh, it. How many drugs did you <clears throat> see? I stayed inside. <laughs> That's um, smart. It was very smart. It was. I just I lived in a really shitty apartment in like a house that was falling apart. It was like a railroad style house i never wanted to be home and i never was motivated to do anything and then it was around april when i came by like the first time around where you were talking about developing something like this and i wanted to develop something when you came to Catherine street i think so the old house yeah, sure was that that was in april that was april of last year oh wow i thought that was earlier no it was april because it was wrestlemania weird <laughs> And so I remember it was WrestleMania. Um, and that was my, my birthday gift or my anniversary gift was to go to the pay-per-view that was in Orlando. So that was the reason why I was there. And I asked if I could stay with you. That's right. Okay. So I, you know, it was during the, the split. It was during the like, oh, we just need time to think. So around that time, I was I wanted to do Dungeons and Dragons. It was a thing I wanted to always delve into. But I didn't know if my nerd card was like, you know. Real ready to like enough. a yeah exactly like i didn't know there's always someone who's going to be nerdier than you, you had sex with a girl and you were like i don't know if i can play this game I'm like i don't know i have sex like every three months and it's <laughs> <laughs> the one time living the, uh, dream. living the dream um but i wanted to do something like top tabley like games um so i knew my friend played D D. he had me play like maybe a year prior to that briefly on uh roll 20 and I thought it was pretty cool, but I didn't really understand the mechanics. And because I was in that relationship, I couldn't, you know, really do it because I was in a controlling relationship and a manip- manipulative relationship. Um, so by the time I got to it, I completely made a character that was in my situation, which was, you know, he was bitter. He was, you know, he just lost his wife and he lost his daughter. And he was just this man who isolated himself and put himself in this, like, island and so through that i it was easy to play 
Yeah. Super easy to play this grump and person that, you know, was so full of self-loathing that, you know, he couldn't function in a group environment. And through playing with my friends, like I reconnected with all these friends. There were before your time in high school. Like I was in, I was a sophomore when they were seniors. Mm -hmm. So I always hung out with them because they were the cooler, like bigger kids and they were nerdy and weird. And, uh, so through that, I reconnected with them. I reconnected that, oh, people will care about me and I'm not a piece of shit. And so through that, my character started realizing that, which was weird. It was through a weird kind of like working through my own shit by fighting monsters and, you know, getting new stuff and just, you know, growing as a character. And my, um, my DM Shane is really good at, he was, I gave him a story and I just, told him to run with it and you know i started getting closure for things even in game like uh he made my daughter still alive and so my character met his daughter again and that was a cool like really cool moment that i actually got choked up at the table like it's just i i put so much heart into this character and he helped me so much that you know I see from behind the curtain, like behind the screen or whatever, I see you guys working through shit all the time. Like, I think your communication skills with each other are getting better. I think also with Mike, it's getting better mm -hmm. that you're able to, you know, I don't know if it's being able to use this veil as, you know, oh, we're only talking through characters, but there are times where I think you're talking to each other about teamwork and about cooperating. And it's just obviously you're fighting something or you're trying to solve a puzzle, but it, I think it helps you guys know how to react like you in a kind of like a safe way. Yeah. Yeah. It definitely gives you a, um, it definitely gives you <clears throat> the, the guise of, of safety. It gives you a safety net and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can be a little more free and, and lax with what you're saying. Um, and yeah, I mean, I, I just, I, I think what, what, what kind of effects does it had on you personally yeah. in uh, well, real life application? Uh, when we started playing, I was extremely anxious mm -hmm. and I, I didn't realize how, how anxious I was, but it's coming off of that, that super toxic relationship and, and not having a, a steady job for a long time. Mm -hmm. I was like super in my head. Everything was very, very dire, very serious. And that's why I picked a character that was, oh, I'm just going to do this shit. I'm going to do whatever I want. And it helped me relax and to be like, oh, I can just like enjoy life. Life is, is fun. Yeah. And uh, I remember, what, what was the, f there was some beef between Rufio and Absidy very early on. It was when we had um, uh, Craig, Craig and Mel. Yeah, Craig yeah. and Mel on. And uh, you, you, you were like being a dick, but it was Rufio and because it was still very early, I was stuck mm -hmm. in that head of everything being awful. I'm like, God damn it, Pat, why are you being so mean to me? <laughs> <laughs> but, but then playing, like, once we get to episode 13, yeah. Rufio and Absidy have this whole like conflict. I'm like, oh yeah, this is just, we're just having fun. This yeah, is exactly. You're, you're able to separate it. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 I was too. able, the main thing is it let me remember that there's a lot of play yeah. just in life. Mm -hmm. So No, it's it's super crazy. Uh, the Just the way... Um, it's changed for, for a lot of people. And I think, you know, he's not here right now, but I think it's helped Mike too. I think it's helped Mike, you know, re find his, his path. And, and I feel like for a while, especially with the job stuff that he went mm -hmm. through and whatnot, and I don't know how much of, it, of that he wants us to divulge, but I'll leave it at that. You know, I feel like he kind of lost his way and I feel like him getting into this and, and having something else to be able to go and do that isn't money centric. It's not something mm -hmm. that, you know, D and D isn't something that you need to spend a shit ton of money on to be able to have fun. You right. definitely can. You, you can. Oh my God. Oh God. You can. <laughs> can did, you? What did you spend on your figure? Oh, uh, so it was $30 to make and then it shipped to the painter and the painter charged me 50 with a birthday discount to paint it. And then I had it shipped back to me. So I ended up spending like 80 something bucks on my figure, but I love it. Oh yeah. It's so worth it. I it's love such a great it. Figure. It's, I love, and it's one of those things that like when I end up, you know, when, when Rufio gets retired as a character, 
or he's just not as inconsistent use. Like when I have my big boy job, when I'm at my desk or whatever, he's going to, I'm going to put that figure, you know, there <laughs> it's going to sit on my desk and it'll always be my, you know, my reminder of, of this. Cause you know, when I started playing too, I wasn't in the greatest place. And I've, yeah. I've said on our last podcast that we <clears throat> did, you know, a lot of people that are uh, not super close to me. Cause i for a long time, didn't let people get close to me. Um, I fought that and, uh, I, I did therapy this year or mm-hmm. last year. And, uh, I feel like this definitely helped. This was something that I could backpack on, uh, therapeutically. And I was in a, a relationship that wasn't great mm-hmm. as well. And, and, you know, was going through a lot of things with, with, uh, I guess I'd always had the mindset that I needed to do it myself. And yeah. if I didn't do it myself, it wasn't going to get done the way it is that it needed to. And that was very much Rufio in the beginning. It needed to be done this way. This is the way. And yeah. and as the the campaign has gone on, and even in the last um, in the in the last episode we recorded, I, I think the group has a, a stronger dynamic and and you know conceding and and you know spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> if you guys watch our D and D stuff, you know Absidy being with Irina. I think, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, you know, Rufio stepping back and be, and giving them that extra moment to have and, and stuff like that is something that, uh, mm. you know, I wouldn't have done early. I wouldn't yeah. have, I wouldn't have done that early on, but, uh, you know, as we've grown as individuals, it's, it's really crazy how it has, like I said, real life applications. It does. It really does. And then other things like you get, like your emotions are weird like my emotions are weird and they play into it. Like when we had our moment as Irina and Absy, like it actually affected me. Like yeah. I felt, I don't, I don't know if it was me working through something in general of, uh, you know, cause I don't open up with anyone about like, yeah, I care about you, but I don't have that. Like, you know, I don't talk about it. Right. So having me, because we've been friends for so long, that I don't think I've ever said out loud something to that extent of how much, you know, you mean to me. And so I guess it was just, I don't know if it was like my subconscious playing through it or it just, I know that sometimes um, <clears throat> there's a thing called RPG bleed mm-hmm. where it's, you know, you get into this headspace of this, you know, character or this person so much that, you know, it starts to bleed into your actual relationship with people. I know that there are ways where it's a positive and a negative. Um, and I don't, I don't think ours necessarily was a negative. Um, but it's something that I think I have to be aware of because, mm-hmm. you know, he might try to kiss you. I might try to kiss, I might try to kiss you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's, it's something that, you know, I think I have to take into consideration cause it is, at times it is a game and you know, I know when I play sometimes myself or my other players, they get frustrated with each other. Mm-hmm. Like, Ugh, why didn't you do this? Why didn't you think that when after all, it's just, it's you playing a dice game with your friends. Yeah. So, but you because know. it is all theater of the mind, yeah, it, it does bleed a lot. You can see when, uh, whenever shark goes down or the first time I went down, mm-hmm. there was a real, like, sinking in your chair like oh my yeah God, i'm it's gonna die chest feeling like it feels awful to go down and then when i have to make you start doing death saving throws oh those feel like the dice feel so fucking heavy when you have to roll those yeah. it's because they're metal it's because they're metal <laughs> yeah we switch <laughs> <laughs> you switch dice to the metal ones it, yeah i mean i just uh I love it. It's definitely, like I said, been a been a thing of, of therapy mm-hmm. for me in real life. I know, yeah. you know, you and I. I mean, shit. We went we went out last night. The three of us were out. I did a trivia, and they they came and hang out. And uh, afterwards, Josh came home because he had to wake up like a normal person. Yeah, at a decent time. And Justin and I continued to drink and play pool. And we ended up just talking D and D. And I mean had there been people there it wouldn't have made anything any different but we yeah. only had one person at the table behind us and we were just chatting up a storm about theories and things yeah. that we wanted to happen and things that we thought were going to happen and mm-hmm. just like and it's crazy like that it, it bleeds in and and you know one of the things that it was either you or Justin I can't remember who said it but it was like uh as you start to play more and more it becomes you know when we did this thing when I did yeah. that thing mm-hmm. when that when this happened to us and like that is something that I've realize that I do now and I it, it's not even something that I'm like <laughs> cognizant of but I yeah. like it I wouldn't change it even if I was yeah because it, it for me it was an experience I was there but I actually wasn't but yes. you were sitting right here yeah but you were but I was but yeah. I wasn't 
but it's, I was. it's a weird, it's a weird sensation. It's a, and it's a weird feeling, but you know, 100% you guys, you know, you beat a, what was it? A succubus. You guys, you know, Yo. you guys had an interaction with this big bad that you, you know, usually is at the end of the game. But what? you know, what? <laughs> when you met Strahd, like, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. man, like you, you have those experiences and you, you still go through those emotions of, you know, I know you got fucking frustrated because you kept trying to hit them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And your dice yeah. were not they kind were to you. They not being good. That day. They deserve to be in jail. <laughs> I'm going to put them in jail. Yeah. But, there's, um, yeah. there's like, there's some science about, uh, of the brain, of mm-hmm. how, for a while we thought of the brain as just like a uh, self-enclosed <clears throat> one thing. I'm not, I'm no, I'm, I know I'm not explaining it well. <laughs> it's not just one thing. It's, it's like a, a cell. It's a, a piece of a larger thing. So okay. when we have this theater of the mind thing, there is a an actual connection between okay. the mind. I don't, I know okay. I'm really not explaining it well because I only just heard about it, but yeah. it's. I'm I'm trying to get to that. It, it is like a real thing. There's yeah. a, there's an actual it's thing like that happens. It's a genuine experience. Yeah, it, it is a genuine experience. Yeah, definitely. No, it was it, it's awesome. It's one of those things that like in the in the Discord that we all have now, um, <laughs> like you would even say you were like i got bit hard and i did it's something that i i look yeah. forward to every two weeks you know i'm excited to be able to play and like i look forward into getting into more shit with these guys and like you know as much as i don't want anything negative to happen to my character if it were to happen you know i'm ready to build another character and, yeah. and continue on and do what it needs you know i'm excited I, I i'm genuinely excited and i like it and i feel like it has a similar effect to the, the conscious and the subconscious as changing your diet, as mm-hmm. working out, as, mm-hmm. you know, interacting with, with people outside of your, your chosen circle. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it's definitely made me, um, I think a little softer to people. I'm not as brash and mm-hmm. aggressive, uh, verbally as I, I think I was before because, if you watch death house, uh, (laughs) that's exclusively all I am is brash (laughs) and aggressive. Um, and I think it has built uh, a softness to me Mm -hmm. and, uh, I very much like that. And it's so crazy. Like you said, like RPG bleed, but it, you know, sometimes it bleeds over into the positive and I definitely think that that's what's happened with me personally. And, and there's other things like you said with you, your anxiety has gone down and you're now you're just like, Cool, we're gonna do a thing. Yeah, we can have fun. <laughs> we get matches. I don't know if, if Pat told you, but his uh his cousin watches all of our D and D stuff. Oh. Guess who his favorite character is? Is it you? It's dirt. <laughs> is it dirt? Yeah. It is dirt. Oh my dirt god. Dirt is his favorite. Dirt it ah oh man. Dirt is He's also almost caught up. He started watching when he started doing the drawings for our characters, yeah. which are gonna be on our Instagram. You should follow us. What? Uh, That's awesome. And uh he hasn't done dirt. Dirt is in the process now. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it just dirts his favorite. Dirts his favorite, and he's on, he's he's I think he's on sixteen now. Holy shit! So and that's all that we have po- that posted th- uh, for uh, Thursday. Yeah. So he's he's, he's literally caught up in a week. That's so so fucking rad. It's super yeah. cool. It's that's super really cool. funny that but dirts his favorite. I also wanted to stroke your ego a little bit because Thank dirt you. is you. Dirt dirt is low key my favorite as well. I know like, he's pretty much the he's best. He's pretty yeah. much the greatest. He's like the funniest member of the group, and it's great. I love dirt. It's also nice having him as a little bit of a a push in the right direction. Yeah, that's that's what I I try to make with him. Um, because once again, we just wanted to make originally when we were building Rufio together, it was you know. You were like, I want to be Batman. Yeah. And it went great. I'm like, do you want a Robin? And I asked that because my paladin just uh, has a squire as well. Mm -hmm. And I just figured out you can have one. Yeah. Like, I didn't think that, oh, I just take this background and then I just get another person that has to do everything I say. Mm -hmm. My, uh, My squire is Brock. Brock is a giant Goliath. He's 12, but he's like six foot. And he's just, he's, once again, he keeps my character in check in a different way. My character is very lascivious and wants to fuck everything. Nice. And Brock's like, no, we should probably figure this out. Like, I'm going through a pretty cool storyline where my character wants to go home. And Shane is able to use Brock as a compass for my character saying, no, we need to figure this out first and then we can go home. Yeah. So that's what I originally wanted to have as dirt for you, which... um, it hasn't been revealed in game, but dirt. I uh, 
in my history of the character was assigned to you as opposed to, as opposed to like, oh, hey, pick your squire and then, you know, it's a random kind of thing and this is the person you're going to mold. It's No, this is the brightest kid that was in the Abbey and you're the most brash. Yeah. You need to have someone, iron only, you know, sharpens iron. Yeah. So get the smartest kid with the most compassion so you can be a better knight. Yeah. And I can teach him how to not and then, be yeah. a puss. And then other <laughs> side is, which is, you know, give, make this kid a little bit tougher. He has a lot of potential to be this great warrior. You know, his heart's in the right place, but, you know, he, he lets other things get in the way. So I wanted to do a, I wanted to do a Batman and Robin thing, but it's what I see it. It's going to slowly, I think, turn into like a Batman Nightwing kind of thing where yeah. it's, you know, we work together. DG. DG. Do you still play that first character? Finn? Have? Oh, uh, Finn. I didn't know what the Yeah, name his was. name's Finn, uh, which is uh, just weird. Um, I haven't played him since January. Uh, he was... We were at level 12. I just leveled up to 12, and we did experience, so it was just a bitch and a fucking half to get to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, very excited. He was a lot like... Uh, kind of like Green Arrow. So he was rough around the edges. He was an archer. But he also had this magic bow that he could use smites. So I was ranged. I was able to smite the fuck out of anything. And I had, uh, with this mystical arrow, I didn't, or mystical bow, I didn't have to worry about buying arrows. They just (sighs) generated arrows and they did cold damage automatically. And I did, he did so much fucking damage and he was a great character. Everyone used to get mad because I usually got the finishing blow with things. (laughs) Cause I wouldn't, I wouldn't hit anything for the first like 10 rounds. And then when I hit, I fucking hit. And I made sure. you like run to the back? Is well, I'd stay why? in the back and then my dice, I have specific dice for each character. And his dice are very finicky. And uh, I just, I wouldn't hit for like a good chunk. And then when I hit, I would do like 89 points of damage. Or I do. I was disgusting with this character. And then when something got close, the, the arrow would turn into a sword, kind of like Kuwabara from Yu Yu Hakusho. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was a spirit sword. So it'd be a two-handed weapon, and then I could smite that as well. That's awesome. Um, but Shane is actually, when we get to 150 subscribers, he said, he's going to make us, because our current campaign is in that same campaign setting. It's just set, I think, 40 years after our characters. And there is apparently this big dragon war where we fought all these dragons. And so he wants to make a level 20 one shot or three mini series where we get to play those characters again. And I'm looking extremely forward to it. That'll be because cool. I, I miss that character a lot. How do you think? Uh, so we've a, a bit, of, a bit of outside meta ness. Sure. Since you started coming down here and DMing for us uh, every two weeks, or I guess every other weekend. Yeah. Um, you've talked about one of your goals being to have us all meet up. Yeah. And do a big game, which would be obscene. That would just be a, it'd be a, disgusting, an obnoxious amount of people. Oh God, it'd be the D&D. worst. It would, it would be, be the greatest obscene. It'd I feel great. like it would take so long to get through a battle. Yeah, because what there's three of us. Yeah, four. There's 20 people in the chat, so yeah. we wouldn't do all 20. <laughs> no, no. A, but it would be like, like 12, eight or nine, people, right? right? So the original was when I did Tomb of Annihilation. I wanted to basically mesh you two, those two groups together. Um, but since Tomb of Annihilation isn't really happening anymore, uh, it would probably be it's you three, and then it would probably be uh, Shane, Michael, Becca, and Darren. So that'd be seven people. Still a lot. It is a lot. It's yeah. a larger party. Um, I I really do want to do that. I'm trying to do this new thing where I just start doing it with Duke and with uh, with Creed, my uh, my paladin. My paladin's name is Creed. With arms wide open. open. <laughs> he originally was only going to sing Creed songs because I'm trying to make a higher? pala bard. Oh god! I'm oh. making a paladin bard, and he's going to be glamour bard. So he's going to be like Ziggy Stardust. Dope. I'm very excited for him. But um, with those two characters, what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to roll attack and damage at the same time because it speeds things up. Yeah. So, you know, if you're doing D8s, so you just roll your D20 with your D8s, and then if it hits, that's the damage you do. Okay. Hmm. And then the only thing that I'm trying to figure out is I attack three times with Creed. So I'm trying to figure out if I want to do, because there are so many different dice apps, and I'm weird about specific sets because mm-hmm. I need to buy more D20s for them. 
but um I, I'm trying to figure out what damage goes with which dice. Yeah. So I don't know if it's going to be a case of color coding. I don't know if I'm going to get specific dice for each weapon he has. I have to figure that out yeah. only because I want to make it easier and quicker for everyone. But what I found when I do it, it makes things go a lot faster. You notice it? I've noticed it. Because, you know, I'll have, you know, I'll roll a natural 16 and I know that hits. This is the damage I did. We can move on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, also, when you have a large party, you can imagine yeah. you need that. Also, it's super helpful to know we don't have that we have this issue in the respect that it's not your guys's fault it's just how battle kind of flows because you're a smaller party Mm -hmm. knowing what you're gonna do before you do it is also super helpful Mm -hmm. oh yeah if you watch any of the dragon campaigns my nose is usually in a book because i'm trying to figure out what i'm gonna do next around my term and it usually takes about six minutes before it will revolve back to me so I, with you guys, it's a lot shorter. You have like maybe a two minute. Yeah, because we're only span. a party of three, sometimes four. Yeah, <clears throat> and a lot of the time we're basing what we do on mm-hmm. what the enemy does. Yeah, so it's we don't roll great initiative, is what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Duke doesn't. He's a negative one to his initiative. He's nice. usually last. Ooh. Yeah. Um, but I think knowing what you're doing, and then there's another like battle, uh, mechanic that Shane always keeps talking about trying, but no one wants to do because it sounds dumb, but it's basically battles normally and fights are usually a random. Yeah. Uh, basically you would have a new initiative order every round. That's dumb, which is very, I feel like it'd be super time consuming. I feel like it'd be more time consuming. Yeah. I think rolling the extra damage would really help with that. And then knowing what you're doing beforehand, I think having a more balanced party also helps with that. Cause if everyone has a specific job, I had a, basically Duke is the leader of uh, the dragon campaign, which is super weird because I don't, I'm not a leader, uh, which I found, I think that's helped me in my personal life though. Mm -hmm. But um, basically what we did is we assigned jobs and I found that's also made things a lot easier because there were times where battles were super long and we were getting our asses kicked and we're level eights. We shouldn't be getting our asses kicked this easily. Yeah. So I figured because we have three range people and then three melee people, we just corner off into three teams. You have support, which is me, and then another ranger cleric, so he can hit far away while I can focus on healing people mm-hmm. and then get a melee and a ranged person and a melee and a ranged person. Yeah, that's So, good. you know, as long as you have a better balanced team as well, I think it makes things go a lot faster because everyone has a specific job that they're going to do. Like, oh, I'm going to do this damage. I'm going to do this damage. I'm going to make sure everyone stays up. I'm going to, you know, try to get closer. What We've is kind of started developing that too. Yeah. A little bit. Your yeah. AC now is what is well it's disgusting. Going like, to be a nineteen and then yeah. with Shield of Faith it'll go up to twenty one. So gross. Yeah, so you're clearly the tank. <laughs> <laughs> clearly. Uh and then especially with werewolves, if I if, well, once I get Mongo's Claymore back. Oh damn. Oh Mongo's two Claymore. Two attacks, baby. Two attacks. Me um too. you do have two attacks. <laughs> I'm you're a the barbarian. Same. You're the same. You're I'm a, a little barbarian. I'm a pala barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> We're all the same. <laughs> I'm better than you. <laughs> what? Sorry? Um what is one of the th- things that you've noticed from Death House to our last record session uh in in the group? In, as far as like growth? Yeah. Um it it really what I've seen is you you ask a lot more questions in the regard of, you know, you you know what to look for. Mm-hmm. I think you know what to try to. You're more perceptive. Um, you also try a lot more things because originally in Death House, it's you guys trying to learn the mechanics. And despite me saying, hey, it's your world, do whatever you want. You know, you. But what do we do? Exactly. <laughs> what do we do? How do we do this? I want to pick this lock. How do I do that? Like, do you, you guys have definitely grown as far as players. Um, I don't consider you guys new players anymore. Um, no, we just bumped. I saw that. Um, I'm telling the audience oh, okay. in case they're just listening to the podcast. Oh, it was a fist bump. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've noticed that you guys, you know, you're more detail oriented. You're, you know, when you met Rick Tavio, you're like, what's this dude's deal? You don't trust anyone, which is, that's just a natural D&D thing. You don't yeah. trust anyone. <laughs> Everyone is out to get me. But, you know, you you start exploring things without being like, you start making fucking diversions so this one can go through every single hotel room. Oh. 
and that was crazy. And it I was just fucking pick the lock. <laughs> Yeah, but you guys went through. You guys, you guys have definitely, sorry, grown as I think as characters and as players. Um, you know, you've done little things where you thought like, oh, we're gonna have a competition and try to woo this one girl, and then through that, it's turned into something I think a lot more. We're getting more growth from Absidy, which I really you know appreciate, mm-hmm. and I think you know is really coming. And then we have the whole Rufio arc that is slowly like coalescing and it's always in the fucking background of this you yeah know. it's always in the back of i mean it's always in the back of my mind i'm always waiting for like werewolf attack like i'm, werewolf I'm just kind of like always like eh, we're gonna die or you're waiting for horror to come up it's one of the two yeah. yeah ultimately like that and that's one of the cool things too is that josh said you know like those interactions are always fun for me yeah when i get to interact with with horror and stuff it's always mm-hmm. it's always fun it's and entertaining yeah and i think it's the same with mike with uh with when his brothers come in and see shark and you know whenever mike plays shart he's very rough around the edges except when he's with his brothers like his character yeah. is mostly this like yeah boobs alex taint, jones alex jones but then when he's with his brothers you see this very vulnerable character who just wants his brother it's back it's way softer it's so it's sweet and he just softer. wants his brother back that's like all he wants it's a burpee he's a puppy. i'm just a little puppy i'm just a little puppy I'm excited to, because we had talked about, I don't know if we brought it up with you, but mm. when we get to the end of the campaign, yeah. wanting to go back to Death House and, and do like a commentary track. Do like a commentary? Okay. Because we know it's it's awful. Oh, it's it's bad. It's Just, bad. Like, it's in the way that we don't know how to play. And, and it's, it's like, the way uh, I don't know uh, how to dungeon master. Like, it's rough. It's yeah. rough, but it's, I, it's real. Death House is my favorite of anything that we've recorded. Really? Mm-hmm. Why is that? Because you didn't watch the last episode yet. <laughs> oh, did I? I was there. Uh, no, it's it's my favorite episode because you have three guys who've never played this game before who, you know, basically you took a leap of faith with me of being like, oh, this is something maybe I can be interested in. And, you know, you were kind enough and you were so open to, you know, playing this game and you see your growth already in that three episode time span of each hour you guys got better. And each hour you started asking questions and you started, you know, you started getting more and more into it. And you see slowly this love of this weird role playing game that, you know, there's this weird stigma to that people in their basements and virgins play this game that, you know, it, it reaches everyone. It's it's literally my favorite thing because you literally see your love of the game grow within a three hour time span. Yeah, I like that. Now I've spent so much money. <laughs> Welcome to the club, brother. <laughs> Welcome to the club. And now with D and D Beyond, I can buy even more things. <laughs> All right. No. I, l- I really like how we there's in universe inside jokes that develop. Yeah. Sean. Sean. Potato. What's up? Um, I love my little gold russet. <laughs> my potato. I love Sean as a character so much. I know. Oh, yeah. It's. I feel so bad because I keep going over Mike's joke, but I love it so much. Sean is great. Oh God, it's, it's so just, good. And that's just that Mike is such a creative person. And I think it relays into what you said earlier that, you know, I remember when I got my first like office job, like my creativity went like, yeah, because you're mm-hmm. focusing on other things and you have to put your brain power to other things. But using this as an outlet, like it lets him be silly again and it lets him be creative again. Yeah, it keeps that muscle strong totally and that's what it is i mean ultimately that's what it comes down to your brain is a muscle and if you don't use it in this capacity Mm -hmm. you know and that's that's another reason i think our our stuff is getting better just because we're doing it bi-weekly and and it's bi-monthly by it's the same it's the same thing yeah Yeah, yeah. bi-weekly means twice a week and every two weeks because english is a dumb fucking language really that is yeah i didn't know that yeah uh so we're we're doing it twice a month Mm -hmm. and it, we're working that muscle more and we're getting used to it and we're doing more things and we're trying different stuff. And like, you know, it, it's gotten to the point where I was walking through Barnes and Noble and I saw the car, the Paladin spell cards and I was yeah. like, yup, these will come in handy. These and I dope. didn't even think about it. Like it wasn't even a question for yeah. me. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just little stuff like Josh and I get very little time together at the same time we're, we're home mm-hmm. and every once in a while it'll just, turn into a D thing like we yeah. found out about the feats and stuff and that was that was the conversation that started mm-hmm. and you know for the hour hour and a half that we were in the same room 
it was that's all we were talking about talking was about feats. feats. And then yeah. I left, and he was like, "I'm gonna read up on it. Don't worry." And like he did. And that's like, what Josh does, though. Yeah. That's what you do. Yeah. You're like, "I'm gonna read about it," and then you're like, "Oh, by the way, I've memorized this. <laughs> I know everything." So I'm an expert now. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, roll that, and you're like, "That's not how that damage goes." Yeah, <laughs> actually, on page 56, actually, it says. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put but, my nerd best on. But that's that's what's so great about this game, and there's just there's so much to it too that we haven't even like scratched the surface it on. There's so many other gods. There's so many other classes. I know you want to go ranger. Yeah, that's my next. My uh, Justin and I were talking about it last night. Yeah. That's my next class. I think I'm gonna do ranger. Ranger because he's a little he's a little mushier and like less tanky. And but you still want that kind of like groundedness. Because like, sorcerer or wizard would be mm-hmm. super squishy. That yeah, the most squishy. I don't know if they, I want to be the most. They use d sixes for hit dice. Yeah, no, I'm okay. <laughs> I like ranger. I just I like the battle aspect. Mm-hmm. So I think doing stuff like that would would kind of remove me from it a little bit, and I don't really love that. But if ranger, I don't get to be up in somebody's grill. Yeah. Because yeah. You're a bit that's more just strategic. not, yeah, you, and I like that. I like that aspect of things. You know, I feel like that's one of the things that that you and I kind of spearhead, and we're like, Mike, just go do the thing over there, and he's like, okay, and you and thing. I are like, well, we're gonna go over here, and then that, and then and, then, and that's I enjoy that part. Yeah, of it. me yeah. too. So. I do want to do. Uh, is it the battle tower that you had talked about? Oh, that Shane put together like it's like a gauntlet tower. Yeah, I'd love to do something Fuck like that. Yeah, yes, I I think that would be a really cool one shot to do. Would be you guys create you know new characters, or if you want to use your same characters, definitely use the same characters. Yeah, see how we yeah. do. They have see a coll- how far they have a collective up. dream. Yeah, I mean we eat mushrooms and what? <laughs> we had those dream pastries. Yeah, no, man. those are made with children. <laughs> Yeah, drop a dream prehistory, bro. No, Just yeah. drop it. It's Those bad. are made with kids. <laughs> um, yeah, I would love to do that. I really want to do. I know Shane is working on the toddler one shot, which I really want to do. Cause yeah. I re- I really do. I want to see what the dynamic is when I play as well. Me too. You know, um, warlock is a new like class that I've slowly started getting into because Duke is now a warlock. Um, it's just. There's so many things that you can do with that. That's what makes it. So How hard. do you? And I know we talked about it a little last night, and I yeah. feel like this will be a cool way to kind of close up on it. It'll okay. be a, a very full circle kind of thing. I, t- I said it to Josh before I said it to you, and maybe you realized it before I did. Mm-hmm. But doing this this big game, this seven person game of D and D, hopefully within the next couple of months. Yeah. Uh, before the end of the year, I think is ultimately what our our goal would be. Okay. Um. It'll be the first time Rufio and Duke see each other for like a really long time. Yep. How do you think that dynamic is going to change? How do you think that, do you think that there's going to be an emotional element to yes. that interaction? Yeah. Uh, Duke is my new Finn. Yeah. Um, he is, cause like I said, I'm not a leader and it's weird that he is, uh, cause he's also, he's very Mrs. close to Doubtfire. Me. He's very Mrs. Doubtfire. I'm, a, I'm a supporter. Um, House so. of Pain, go watch it. House of Pain, go watch it. Um, yeah, I'm a supporter. I try to make, like, I get so excited when you guys learn things and you try new things. And it's kind of like, you know, mama birding you guys. And you guys are like, I'm like, go do that. And that's basically what Duke is. And 100%, I have my thought process with Duke and Rufio is that Duke and Rufio have kind of like a an Alfred Bruce kind of relationship still more of that Batman kind of parallel where originally it's, you know, i went on all of these adventures with your father and I took care of him. And when he, you know, asked me because I don't know if Pally is, you know, emotionally inept to take care of a child. Pally. I don't, he's the fun uncle who just gets shit faced and then sleeps on the couch. He's like, (laughs) kid, you want to start drinking? (laughs) I'm I'm nice. (laughs) (laughs) But, um, I always thought that, you know, I don't know, we could always work on that too, as far as what that relationship with yeah. Thomas as long and Duke as I survive. Is. I feel like that should just happen. Because I think yeah. both of you have that character so well defined yeah. internally that if you just improv the scene, yeah. it will it'll happen naturally. My my thought process is with, with Duke is that he's always going to he's always gonna send Rufio a sweater on his birthday. 
he's always going to, you know, whenever Rufio's around, he's going to invite him over and try to catch up with him. He's always going to take care of Rufio because this is an extension of someone that, you know, despite meeting under circumstances of work that he came to grow with this family and he was probably there when, when Rufio was born, or at least he was notified of it. And, yeah. You know, he probably sent like a little baby sweater or something. It's just, that's his, that's his personality. And, uh, I'm very excited for that. Like I said, I have an epilogue in my head. Obviously we're very far away from it. We mm-hmm. are extremely far away from it, but you know, if you make it to the end, Duke will be there with open arms. With arms wide open. With arms. And Creed. Open. And Creed will be there too. <laughs> He's like, what's going on? What's up? I'm Creed. Hey, hey, That's I'm not his here. voice. I'm friends with the guys now? Yeah, I'm friends with the guys now. I'm Creed. <laughs> and this is my uh, my Goliath, Brock. And he's like, stop, I'm Brock. <laughs> Brock and Dirt, and like, Dirt's hang like, out. Uh, <laughs> good. Yeah. No, but uh, I, I mean, it's crazy to think that that these things. I mean, we we've gone on a D and D tangent, and it's and it's yeah. gone D&D. farther away. Yeah, it's gone farther away <laughs> from what it what it is. But I think it's really crazy to think that doing two things so different, you know, diet and and a role playing game yeah. can affect your your confidence and your your brain so much. But it really does. Th- those two things, I think, have really made uh, at least from what you've said, made a, a pretty big difference in in yeah. your life in the last you know few months, at least for the diet. Totally. And and D and D in the last year plus. Mm-hmm. So and I know it's made a difference for for me personally and 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 you as well. Mm-hmm. So you know I, I I don't think we could recommend it enough to people uh, that are, if you have any bit of interest at all in doing something D and D related, yeah. or or you know switching your diet or whatever it is, just just you know give it a shot. There's really you don't have anything to lose. Yeah, I think and it's something that we've shown. Um, little and, steps. Yeah, exactly. you know, little steps. And if you find like it's not for you, then that's fine. You, you know, whether it's diet or doing something like role playing games. Like I know that Craig, super, you know, he just it wasn't for him, which is totally cool. Like there are people who don't, you know, you just move on to the next thing. Yeah. For me, I think Craig is a DM. I think that's Craig. Yeah. I think Craig. He likes being in control and being at the center, and that's. Hey. He needs to learn more about the game <laughs> yeah, in order yeah. to do DMing, but I think he would he would succeed better as a DM yeah. than he would as a player. I mean, a great start is more than happy to give him. I have the remember I got the the beginners kit. The, oh yeah, yeah. Comes with like a five page story, and it's something you can completely run by yourself. Definitely talk to him about it and see what he says. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's a good place to. To shut it down, Agreed. gentlemen. Anything else you guys would like to? You want to plug your your stuff? Sure. Right quick. Uh, I usually say it at the end of a session, but uh, top tabling, uh, Twitch TV dot top lit, Twitch t dot TV slash top tabling. Uh, I play games on there, and you can slow me slowly going insane as I'm talking and as I'm playing. Apparently, um. My brain's starting to turn to mush. Um, yeah, it's the end of the day. <laughs> uh, yeah, but go there. We're on Twitter, and we have a Facebook, and it's just super fun, and I get to play with these guys, and I always look forward to it as well. Cool. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll have our next session next week. You guys won't see that for like a month maybe over that yeah. but we'll be back uh, in character next weekend so we're excited for that and we'll have something releasing on Thursday uh, I think I can get this up by tomorrow if you can do the meta hell tonight. yeah I can do the meta dope so this is gonna go up tomorrow July 30th <laughs> now we've committed and if we don't get it out <laughs> whoops <laughs> whoops sorry Josh's fault no Patrick's yeah. fault yeah everyone's fault whoa Justin's fault yep. yeah <laughs> well Follow us on YouTube or whatever. Subscribe, whatever it is. Uh, Check Instagram. us out on Instagram too. We have some Instagram. cool stuff. We're starting. We're trying to post some some clips there a little bit more often. Uh, we have a new background. As you can see, the logo is upside down. Is it on purpose? I don't know. Yes. Yes. No. No. We don't know. Maybe so. <laughs> Love you. Bye. <laughs>